What is going on in Canada, my friends? I went from happily binging on Tiger King, Netflix and chill to not even understanding or recognizing if I'm living in a free country anymore. And yes, I know there's a dangerous virus out there. I get that. But so many of us are tired with the way Trudeau has run this country into the ground and we need change. So I have driven myself to learn more about politics and take you guys on that journey with me. And and I learned that we have one day, one very important day left if we're serious about wanting to change this country, and that is to become a member of the Conservative Party and vote for who we think is the best leader, the best leader out of these four to help us take out Trudeau, guys. So I'm going to be sharing interview pieces with two of my favorite contestants that I think should get a vote from you. You can actually vote three votes. I'm only going to be giving these two a vote because I am not confident in the other two running. They remind me of Trudeau with wavering on their words and not knowing what they stand for and we don't need that. Please share this video. A lot of people don't even realize they need to be a member in order to vote on this. Now, Dr. Leslin Lewis and Derek Sloan have been upfront and honest their entire campaign. They are both freedom of speech fighters, freedom of religion fighters. Both of them have called out Trudeau for not following the democratic process while passing the gun ban and using the mass murders in Nova Scotia to lobby the reason even though those were illegal guns and they've disarmed law-abiding citizens. Both of them have questioned Canada's ties and loyalties to WHO and the UN and think that that needs to be revisited to make sure we are using treaties and agreements that are in Canada's best interests. Now, in order to take out Trudeau, I think it comes down to their ability to handle themselves better than Andrew Scheer did, especially when it comes to confrontational questions. How do they answer? That's why I've used these two clips. I'm going to put the full clips in the description, but you can watch the clip and then go to the video after if you need it. I think it's going to come down to which of these two should get your number one vote. So if you watch this video, we can stand united against Trudeau and they're going to be asked a tough question about where they stand with conversion therapy. It's not about if you agree with their answer, it's about can they hold their own and can they represent our country. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you're hungry for truth like me so we can keep in touch. Let's do this. So in my platform, there's nothing in there about uh, changing same-sex marriage or anything like that. So I have nothing uh, that I will be bringing forward that will, that will change any of this. So you don't support like conversion therapy? No, I listen. Do you? So, so, are we talking about the Senate bill or, or just, what is well, that? Well, the okay, so therapy where people there's actually pro guns that people's trying to con to re-educate yes. someone who's gay out of that. Do you, okay. do you support those? So, so again, the, I think the issue is is that all of these conversations are, are nuanced, and so you know I was trying to have a little bit of that earlier. So, in relation to this particular issue, um, I absolutely think, especially when we're talking about kids who may be, uh, you know, are being pushed towards uh, taking drugs and, and maybe even surgery to, to change their anatomical gender. I think a first choice should be, hey, can we do like some body affirming counseling? Is there any way we can help these kids? Okay, but you know? do you, okay, but, so, but hang my on, point is, my point is, surgery, so, do you believe yeah. in conversion therapy? So, so it's, it's a pretty, it's the a reason, yes or no. Yeah, the reason I raise that is because the definition of conversion therapy is so broad, it would cover body affirming counseling to help kids accept the gender they're born with. So that's the, the, the so argument you here would like, is, you would like to counsel people to accept the biological identity. So can no, I no, ask you, on. do you, let me just no, ask no, you a question can, on can, transgender identity. Can, can, I, just, can, I, just, can, I, can yeah? I respond? Yeah, I just ahead. want to respond to this. I don't think anybody should be forced to do anything they don't want to do. But if somebody, if somebody wants to receive gender affir or body affirming counseling, uh, when they're going through a, a position of what's going on with me, they should be able to have that. So, sir, I, sir, uh, sir, just for the record, yes, body affirming counseling sounds a heck of a lot like conversion therapy. You realize that, right? Well, and a lot of people that have been through it are going to say, "Boy, you're forcing that on me." I mean, you see where? Like, I'm listen, not, why are you treading okay, on, on all this turf, Evan? I am not saying anybody should be forced to do anything. What I am saying is that if your 12 year old comes to you. And I mean, we know a lot of kids that go through these feelings, grow out of them by the time they're adults. So 
we sorry, we know people grow out of their feelings that they're gay by the time. No, they're I'm adult? not talking about being gay. I'm talking about transgender. So, so, oh, so people, now, okay, there's a new thing. Okay. Yeah. So, so people, so people, so, so kids who, who go through different feelings of like maybe this or that, like this. Is that different? So now you're saying yeah. being transgender is different than being gay? Like, is that a well, different, I, now you're no, saying there's on. a different, I, I, I'm, I'm just speaking, trying to figure it out. I'm speaking specifically about this issue in kids. Many kids who think that they are not their, their birth, uh, their birth gender change by the time they're adults. So if they, if they persist until adulthood, it, it often remains. But what I'm saying is we have to be very careful about kids who are making this decision. And, and we have to say, hey, like... But persist, like yeah. you're making it seem like they have a deficiency. If they persist, no, but, they are struggling yeah, with but, a death. Let me ask you something. Do you support Bill C-16? Do you remember that? Do you know what that bill was? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to remind people, this is the bill that updated the Canadian Human Rights Act and the Criminal Code to include terms like gender identity and gender expression. It was passed in the House. Did you, would you vote for that? I, I would not have voted for you that. You would not. It, yeah. it protects, it was to protect transgender and LGBT yes. communities from yes. the violence, and you would not vote for that. Okay, so obviously I'm against, I don't want anybody. You're obviously against what? I'm obviously against violence, and I'm obviously against, here's the thing. The, thing, the, the issue that I had with C-16 is very similar to the, the, the issues that Jordan Peterson brought out in terms of the compelled speech aspect. So that is my concern. Uh, obviously, I don't have any issue with, uh, with transgender and LGBT people being treated fairly and properly. And so you're in support, for example, the government just brought in a bill banning conversion therapy. Are you in support of that? Well, there are issues with the bill. And I, w I think that the bill needs to, um, I think that Parliament needs to consider the issues of... Um, and unintentional consequences, because I've spoken to many individuals who are concerned, mainly parents, they're very concerned that they could be criminalized for speaking with their children, and pastors are also concerned that in carrying out their pastoral duties, that they could be criminalized also. And so I think that there could be some unintended consequences of that bill, and I think that um, that needs to be dealt with before the bill can be finalized. Is, is it the bill itself that, that you have trouble with, or... or are you, as a candidate here, in support of banning conversion therapy as a practice? I'm in, I I'm, have concerns with unintended consequences of a bill. So any bill that would criminalize a pastor or criminalize a parent, I have concerns with that. And I think that they have to look into those unintended consequences because those are very, very, very deep concerns for many people. Is it criminalizing? Like, what is it that's criminal? Like, I, I guess I, I need to understand better what you have what you think is criminalizing because my understanding is the bill criminalizes the practice of conversion therapy so running a camp for example be it through uh, a pastor or through a church sure. for conversion therapy is that what you're against that's that's not actually correct what what the bill does it says any practice so even a pastor praying with a child but praying um, at, for that child to convert and not be gay no that's not that's not what um it says anything so even if you pray for this this child to have peace or to find their way it that could be deemed as as being criminal and so there are unintended consequences of that bill and that bill needs to we need to make sure that um people innocent people are not unduly criminalized. But should the practice of conversion therapy be criminalized? Let's put aside those concerns. Well, Let's say they're fixed mm -hmm. in the bill. I just want to get at whether or not you think conversion therapy is wrong. Well, if if it's coerced therapy, if somebody is being coerced into it, but if somebody, if a, if a grown adult wants to go and and um, speak to have talk therapy, then they should have the right to do that. This is a this is a democracy. They, they have the freedom to do that. But if it's coerced, absolutely, I don't I don't approve of that. Do you think though that there are people who are gay who want to enter into conversion therapy? Don't, don't you think that's a little bit of a dangerous road to go down? If that's their choice. That's their choice if they want to do that. And if they don't want to do that, they, then they should choose not to. What I'm against is I'm against anybody coercing somebody to be something that they're not. But do you believe that there are gay people who want to go to therapy to convert and not be gay? Some people want to go and speak to their pastor. And under this bill, it could be criminalized. And that's your concern. And that's my concern. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks so much, Ms. Lewis. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Comment below and let me know if you can guess who my number one vote is. <laughs> Comment below, did you get it right? Did you write Dr. Leslin Lewis, guys? I really feel like she's going to be able to hold her own in debates. 
I feel like she uses logic. She thinks before she speaks, but she still stands for what she has told people she stands for. She's considering. If you look at her videos, she is considerate about everybody on different religions, um, different backgrounds, and I think she's going to be very likable, but that she's also not going to put up with crap. She's not going to put up with crap from the people asking her questions or from organizations that are not in Canada's best interest, guys. So that's my number one vote. I recommend you vote for both of these people and that you don't pass the opportunity to be a part of a change for Canada. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I'm Drea James and make sure you hit subscribe and the bell if you're hungry for truth like me. We gotta figure it out together and then I will see you in the next video and you can also hit me up on Facebook Hungry for Truth DG. I'll see you guys there.